Who's my number four? Queen. I am. Um, I'm actually gonna pass it to my sister after we. Okay, so y'all set me out. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Dr. Moore. My name is Diane. Um, resident here in Kansas City, and I am one of those ugly black feminists, feminists that you are not a fan of. So I appreciate you coming here to Kansas City, and I figure if I'm going to have something to say, mm -hmm. I'm going to say it to your face. So I do appreciate. <laughs> I do appreciate you addressing my concerns regarding uh, anti-LGBT rhetoric and anti-feminist rhetoric. So I appreciate you saying that up front. So my question is: uh, the exact definition of hate speech is speech that offends, threatens, insults groups based on race, color, religion, natural or origin sexual orientation, disability, or other traits. That is the definition of hate speech. We can say all day long that we don't hate a particular type of person, but I want to know how is that rhetoric any different than white folks that say that black people are thugs, are mentally not together, that we are in, unintelligent. How is it possible? How is that not different as a black man saying that black feminists are ugly, saying that queer people are, you said it earlier, I can see you on tape. How is that different than saying that gay people are molested, that we are pedophiles? How is that any different than white people? He has said that online, and I have the video. Yes, you have. No, you did say that online. I was accused and derided, as some of you guys know, because of my position on sexual confusion in the African American community. And I understand we may have a few visitors tonight, and I don't mind, okay, of that community. And so I think it's important that I clarify my perspective on black homosexuality and lesbianism so that we're all crystal clear on where I stand. Yes, it is true I do not support it. Yes, it is true I do not condone it. But it is absolutely false if anyone says that Dr. Umar Johnson hates any of my brothers and sisters who practice a traditional lifestyle, tr excuse me, a non-traditional form of, of marriage. Right, so, my, so my question is, how is this anti-woman, anti-gay rhetoric any different than white folks who say that black people are dumb, that we're thugs? Homophobia is hate speech, and anti-womanist is hate speech. Okay. May I respond? Uh, you can! All right. Now first we gotta take the emotionalism out of it. Okay. We won't be able to dialogue, okay? I'm gonna respond, but for the sake of time, I'm going to answer everybody's question, and if you like, when I'm done, me and you can have a private, respectful conversation. Okay? Now, okay, well, I'm going to this one, I'm going to go through, then we can come back to it, <laughs> if you want to have that conversation. Number one, and because I got ADHD, I didn't remember everything, but I think I can get to most of the highlights of what you said. First, you said homophobia. Yes. Oh, you're going to tell me that it's a mental illness from an outdated DSM-3 that was abolished in 1973? Don't try it. This is the DSM-5. Oh, that we were mentally ill. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just want to hear you answer the question. Okay. I didn't pick this up to talk about the fact that homosexuality was a mental illness in this book until 1974. But since you brought it up, I'll start with that. If you read the American Psychological, excuse me, American Psychiatric Association position paper on the removal of homosexuality from this book as a mental illness, and I have it, it's available online, it clearly says that we did not change this classification because we had sufficient evidence to prove that people were born this way. So one of the questions that got to be dealt with from the Eurocentric mental health framework that we're dealing with this issue in, why was it removed? Now, having said that, I picked up the book to ask you on what page is the mental illness homophobia? It's not a mental illness. It's a, it's a disease just like racism, a disease. Who defined homophobia as a disease? This is the authority of mental illness. Where is the diagnosis homophobia? It's not a diagnosis. It's, it's, a, it's a state no, a of being. It's a state of no, being. No, phobia. It's a, state a phobia. Of being. 
A phobia okay. is in this book. Okay, so he's and teaching a phobia, against Let me have okay. Phobia is fear. Simple phobia, any type of claustrophobia, it's a fear. You said homophobia. I'm not afraid of nobody. <laughs> okay. I've been asked by homosexuals and lesbians to have conversations with them on their radio shows. I normally accept the invitation for respectful dialogue. I don't run from the opportunity if it's going to be respectful. Now, I stand by my position as a psychologist, as an educator, as a therapist for normally 20 years, and in 95% of the cases of gay and lesbians, I personally know and met and work with, most of them were victims of sexual abuse as children. I'm speaking not what some white person wrote in some research study. I'm telling you what I know. Amongst black folk, it is a pathology born of childhood sexual victimization. Denial is at the root of all mental illness. It's easy to say I was born like this so I don't have to deal with the pain that triggered it. Now, 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 I never said that because you are gay, you want to prey on children sexually. Now, do you have a strong case of homosexuals and lesbians who prey on children? Look at the Roman Catholic Church. We don't have to debate whether or not folks who are sexually confused who may also prefer children. But am I going to wholesale indict the whole population and say because you gay you want to molest children? I've never said that. I've never said that and I never will say that. I'm very responsible with my words. Now, you drew a comparison that I wouldn't disagree with. You said how was me disagree with homosexuality, how is that any different from the white man saying black folks was dumb and stupid and this and that? You know what the difference is? Well, that was lies about us. That could be proven. You Wrong. I don't denigrate or downgrade black gays and lesbians. Why would I do that? Do you realize black gay men have one of the highest suicide rates in America? Because a speech like a what you no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. If what you say Shades is true. Shades and silence. Listen, being emotional, my queen. What about before he was even born? Listen. What about before he was even born? Thank you, sir. Thank well, you. Okay, what about 100 years ago, 200 years ago? What about it? There's no argument. I'm asking that you. I mean, <laughs> but you said him. Exactly. So what about what was going on before he was born? He inherited it, and he decided to continue the conversation. My queen, my queen, stay with me, stay with me, stay with me. It is a political fact for anyone with common sense. It is a political fact for anyone with common sense. Dr. King was assassinated in 1968. Black Panther Party was destabilized in 1972. Homosexuality became normal in 1974. It is a political fact that homosexuality was declassified as an illness so it could be used to take over the black civil rights struggle. LBGT is what they call the new black. We know it's not black, but they're using it to ignore the black agenda in deference of the LBGT agenda. It is the only minority issue that matters in this country. Now let me ask you a question, my queen. Since we're talking about freedom of speech and people's rights and looking out for those who are being oppressed, and denied the opportunity, where the hell was the LBGT movement when Michael Brown was murdered? Where the hell was the Where we go? Y'all don't speak out against what goes on with black folks. No, y'all don't. Linda Ferguson, I started an organization here, and maybe You're talking about you. I'm talking about that movement. Guess what? The three women that started Black Lives Matter, both Patrice and Alicia, are queer black women. And they are making sure. I'm talking about individuals. I am talking about three women. I am talking about three women. I am talking about three women that started this movement. They do not speak out against white supremacy. And the reason LBGT does not. I'm not talking about you as an individual, but the reason why the LBGT movement does not speak out against white supremacy is you because they are a part of it.
Yes and love. Yes and love. Number four. Number four. Number four. Who's my? She was four. Anybody look up? Anybody look up? I would say, say you have a fact. Just prove myself right. Look up the first story. Number four. 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 Number